Yo, what up? It's Riggs from 103.7 KISS FM in Milwaukee, and you're listening to my man Ryan Hoppy and Super Rich. Hello, it's Riggs from 103.7 KISS FM in Milwaukee. You're listening to the Hoppy and Super Rich Show. This beat, top in my collar. I remember back in middle school, everyone tried to like be a badass, like a pimp. Yeah, so I they would that. actually like pop their collar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll do it right now, just for the segment. <laughs> I feel like it's 2007 again. Call the show six three zero seven eight five two five one zero. That's six three zero seven eight five two five one zero. And now you're a diehard DePaul fan. Like I feel like you're not the most diehard fan because there's probably more fans that are even more diehard. Than you, because they've been watching They're, it longer. Yeah, but for your age group, for our age group, man, I respect your grind. Like you love your blow demon. The the problem is they're so bad now. We're not even going to waste our money on get on getting season tickets this year. Um, That's sad. I'm going to miss going with they, you. They they have two uh, two Did more years. Really go together. Uh, he yeah, it was fun. I got to meet Les Grabs. Yeah, he went there. once with me. The the DePaul Xavier game on Martin Luther King Day. What um, was that one of chance? That that like seventy five year old woman had. Oh yeah, well she's been going forever. She has a free throw chant. What is uh, that? What's the chant? Yeah. Uh, so you go, we want another one just like the other one. Go, and then you say the person's first name. Go, and then you stomp on the the uh, <laughs> was, the risers. Yeah, that it was pretty order. cute the first few times. Then I'm like, <laughs> all right, we want this one just like the other one. Yeah, like, um, got it, honey. Even yeah, though the Cubs nice. are bad right now, I'm. We renewed our season tickets for the right. Cubs for Remember next year. Remember the excitement when they brought in Oliver Purnell? It's the guy from Clemson. He's going to take over. And, well, he he had previously brought up two two more or uh, three previous schools. He brought them and he brought Clemson to eleven straight NCAA appearances. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so so this is an article I wrote. Let's see what's the date on this. Uh, October fifteenth. Check out his work at SportsMockery dot com or at his Twitter account yeah. Ryan Stopbridge. You can go to SportsMockery dot com slash authors, and then I think all the authors pop up possibly. Um, so anyway, uh, DePaul's new new basketball arena is coming. Uh, yeah, and that's the article. So I'll, I'll, I'll read this. It's not long. Um, we have heard it for almost two years. The new arena for DePaul is coming, but nothing has happened. It's been all talk and no action on breaking ground. That is, until today. DePaul officials said today that the arena will be on track for breaking ground this winter. This is the first time anyone has heard of a set time for starting the construction. Having this winter set for the starting... Uh, for starting the construction means that things are finally coming together for this project. So now here's a little breakdown on the project. The 173 million McCormick Place Arena will be the new eventual home of the DePaul Blue Demons basketball uh, for men and women, I think. Uh, site clearing is underway and infrastructure work will follow for that for the arena and a planned hotel on Cermak Road west of the exposition complex. Uh, it is going to be a 10,000-seat arena as opposed to the 18,000-seat All-State Arena where DePaul currently plays. They'll See, be playing that hurts there the for, team. That hurts the team. Yeah, they'll, they'll be playing there for two more years. They'll be playing this season and next season. And not just All-State. that. Not just that. Yes. But yeah, there's all these at, at, things at around it about how Quentin Richardson went there. Like, you have all the memorabilia. You have all the banners of when they won the division or whatever. Well, they like, can just move that to the new arena. I know, though. but it's been really put up issue, there but... for a reason. It's well, just... they, they've been playing in Rosemont because, you know, it, um, it was called the Rosemont Horizon until 2000 when they did a big redo, and then Allstate bought it, and now it's the Allstate Arena. But they have been playing there since 1980, and when they moved in there in 1980, DePaul was the number one team in the country. They were the number one team after that. They were good all the way. They went to the Sweet 16 in 1987, uh, and then they uh, and they were and they were doing that all while they were um, an independent team. The conference until 1991 when they went into the Midwest Conference. Um, yeah, so they you know they, they've had a, a rich history, as I say all the time. Now, did the stadium usually fill up like all 18,000 seats? Was it usually a full house? Not the last five or six years. Their last good season was uh, 2006, 2007. That's when they went to the NIT. They were on the bubble for an NCAA tournament, but there was at when that was time, that? 2006, 2007. I, am, I think I remember that. Um, they they had a big win over number five Kansas at Allstate Arena. That that was the last time I re- I remember it being completely sold out. Then the Notre Dame game was sold out. That that was in February of 2007. Uh, DePaul upset Notre Dame in that game, uh, but they did not. You know they they haven't been to the NCAA tournament since 2004. Why are they so bad? Well, they don't bring in names. Well, well there, there's a lot of reasons. The main reason is the Chicago recruits. Uh, the they go, can't bring in Diddley squad. Go to Duke, go to North Carolina, go to everywhere. I, I'm going to continue 
to read this article first, um, and then and then I'll talk more about it. But so the uh, new site is three miles south of DePaul's downtown center and seven miles from their main Lincoln Park campus. The Blue Demon Men's current Rosemont home is 15 miles northwest. Formerly called the McCormick Place Event Center, the new arena will be owned by the Metropolitan Pier and Exposition Authority. So, in short, that's called McPier, <laughs> and leased uh, and and leased by DePaul for men's and women's basketball. Use for conventions, meetings, concerts, and other events are also being envisioned. McPeer and DePaul are contributing around $70 million towards arena construction, according to reports. So the other stuff's coming from the city. The other uh, almost $100 million is coming from the, the rest of the city. Because the, the whole project's $173 million. What a waste of money! Why don't you put that money to help out Englewood? Or help out those potholes that are all over the city? Or add or, extra money to Wrigley Field. Yeah, I- exactly. <laughs> but how about something non-sports for once? How about something that helps out the city? No n- union workers like you at all. I've read the wall post on Rahm Emanuel's Facebook fan page. Ugh, fan page. No one likes you. Why don't you do something productive? I'm not the biggest political fan, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know all my facts. But I feel like putting money in an arena for a bad basketball team on a different part of the town, especially when their fan base That's is exactly people, the people, you're a scumbag. You're a leech when you're putting your money into that. All right. And that all Rahm Emanuel does is this. All he does is take pictures, read books, the kids at the local library, and bitch that the side of Donald Trump's building. It's his building. Says Trump on it. Right. That's what this buffoon does. This little rat. Literally, Rahm Emanuel is no different than a rat in an alley. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Like, what is he doing with the city? I'm well, let me saying, read the, the rest of this article I respect what he's doing first. to Wrigley Field, though. I actually... Yeah. No, I am actually glad that he... Uh, is no, I, I am glad he's the mayor because Mayor Daley didn't do crap with with Wrigley Field. Well, Mayor Daley's another buffoon. And he built that, that whole U.S. cellular field with the money that they could have used to help Wrigley Field. Uh, yeah. The project is expected to take around 22 months to complete. They're going to be breaking ground this winter. Um, okay. so, so here's the issues. This is where I really start to get into it. DePaul has played at Allstate Arena since 1980, formerly the Rosemont Horizon from 1980 to 1999. They were number one in the country for their first few years in Rosemont, but a few bad years and not enough attendance has prompted DePaul to think the only way to bring back winning basketball is to build a brand new arena on the south side of Chicago. Well, guess what? If you are around the DePaul University campus, you will have to sit through traffic to get from Lincoln Park all the way to McCormick Place. Instead of being on I-90 and sitting in traffic for a little bit to travel 15 miles north to an arena with 8,000 more seats and suburban season ticket holders. When DePaul had good teams throughout the 1980s, mid to late 90s, and mid 2000s, people were coming. It didn't matter where they were playing; people came to see them. You know, when they were good, they also played at the United Center for a lot of their games. Um, it wasn't out of their way. Allstate Arena is right by O'Hare Airport, where millions of Chicagoans and people worldwide come through every day. Yeah, because you don't know. Maybe they might see what's in town. They're like, "Hey, let's go see a basketball game." You can improve the fan base, and then the word gets out. Right. Yeah, this team isn't the best. Yeah, one of their players knocked up a chick, and he's a dumbass who hadn't heard of a condom. But, hey, let's go check out the team. Uh, all right. Uh, What's the farthest that DePaul has gotten in a tournament since you were a season ticket holder? Uh, well, my dad's been a season ticket holder since he went to, to college there in 1980. Um, What's the farthest they've gone? They went to... <sighs> Didn't they go to, like, the second well, round? Well, when my dad was a senior in high school, a, a year before he went to uh, DePaul, they went they went to the Final Four and lost to Indiana State. And wow. That's, that's when Larry Bird and Magic Johnson faced off in the 1979 championship. Um, so I, Wasn't I, I never Ray liked Larry Leonard, Bird. Ray Meyer. Ray Meyer was their coach. Mark, Mark Aguirre was their best player. Uh, here, a, let me read this last dude, paragraph. Dude, he's first. a baller in 2K, Mark Aguirre. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. DePaul isn't losing because they are at Allstate Arena. They are losing because the recruits in Chicago go to Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, basically anywhere but Chicago, which is true because they want to get away from the gun violence and their homies, right? <laughs> now at the new arena, uh, 8,000 less people get to see DePaul basketball live. You lose the great majority of your season ticket holders in the suburbs. That's a fact. Uh, the contract DePaul had with Allstate Arena was not renewed, so the last season they play there is 2015-2016. That'll be two more seasons. Then it's off to the complete opposite side of town for a smaller arena and the same results. It's not the best part of town either. I'm not saying that matters because the Bulls play in a bad part of town and so do the White Sox. But you can't just move a team. This is a bad team. What the hell is Rahm Emanuel doing? Get your priorities together. Well, it's not bro. just them. It's it's the uh, the athletic director for DePaul Athletics, Gene Lenti Ponsetto, who's a well, you know him B well. word. Um, she. 
She is. First of all, it's a girl athletic director. That's the first issue. <laughs> second issue. <laughs> the second issue is she's a B word. The third issue is I hate her. <laughs> She she's literally ruining. God, she's, How long she's has just been ruining. The athletic director uh, the conver- since 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 the late nineties. So so it's been quite a while. But. I would love to hear the conversations amongst the fans. Oh, and I sit right near her because she stands uh, near the tunnel where the the players exit, and we sit just a section right next to it. So. Yeah, I I don't I don't like her. Here's what I think. And of this her. is your last season with the tickets, or did you already drop them for this? We season? dropped the season tickets because there's only two more years at All State, and still, if if nobody sits in those seats, we could just buy you know cheap tickets and just sit where we normally sit if yeah. no one took our seats and people anyway. Would know that they're yours. Oh yeah, be, because we know all the the people who who check the tickets and everything, so we could just walk down with those. Here's what I think of her. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, is that about it? They they are improving, sort of. You know, they're now they're in that uh, the new Big East conference with uh, Creighton, Xavier, and Butler universities. Yippee um, ki yay! So uh, you know th- they'll probably get a few more conference wins, but tournament bound not for a very long time. That they haven't been to the NCAA tournament since 2004. They only made it to the ten second years, round. Ten years. And they only went once with Quentin Richardson, Bobby Simmons, and uh, you know all, all those guys. They only went once in 2000. Man, I feel like you need to just do a show just about DePaul basketball. Just be like the post-game host. Because you know more than any of the fake sports analysts. Well, I do like time. Zach Zedman. I like his call. on. Yeah. But he's a good play-by-play college basketball guy. But besides guy. them, you know more than any of the fake sports analysts in this town. We will be right back, and we will wrap everything up after this. Hang on. The Hockey and Super Rich Show. This is the edgeonair.com. ICB Lombard's own underground station.